Greetings, friends, and welcome to Pilgrim Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, on today, December 27th, the first Sunday after Christmas. We are so glad that you have joined us for worship this morning, wishing you a Merry Christmas, a joyous Kwanzaa, and looking forward to the new year. We are an open and affirming, welcoming church that is seeking to journey to understand how God is still speaking to us today. Thank you for joining us on that journey. Let us worship. Good morning, and welcome to Pilgrim Congregational Service this first Sunday of Christmas, December 27th, 2020. My name is Jenny Burney, and I have the honor of being your liturgist today. Will you please join me in an attitude of prayer for our call to worship? 
all God's people, boys and girls, men and women, come and worship. Shepherds, wise ones, saints and angels, come and worship, come and worship. All who need the Savior, all who long for comfort, come and worship. Come and worship Christ, the newborn King. Please join me in an attitude of prayer as we move into the opening prayer. In your love, which never ends, steadfast grace, you hear the cries of all the two-year-olds cast aside by the world, and the weeping of their mothers who cannot feed them because there is no hope. Wrapped in an old blanket to keep you warm in a cold stable, and smuggled into Egypt to keep you safe. Marginalized Messiah, you know the searching of refugees for a place they can call home, for a life they can call safe. Cradling the innocents killed in war, remembering those driven from their homes by fear, greed, or power. Sing laments with all the parents who cannot give their children the lives they should have. You proclaim God's name for us, spirit of sanctuary, God in community, holy in one. You fill our hearts with yourself, for you continue to come into this world. Give us the peace, the joy, the hope to carry to all who cry out to you this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now please join me in the opening hymn, Angels We Have Heard on High. We are singing only stanzas one, two, and three. time of confession, I invite you to join Jenny and I in an affirmation for Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa is an African-American and Pan-African holiday which celebrates family, community, and culture. Dr. Milana 
Karinga, professor and chairman of black studies at California State University, Long Beach, created Kwanzaa in 1966. After the Watts riots, riots in LA, Dr. Karinga searched for ways to bring African Americans together as a community. He combined aspects of several different harvest celebrations, such as those of the Shante and the Zulu, to form the basis of Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa is celebrated for seven nights from December 26th through January 1st. And on each of the seven nights, the family gathers and a child lights one of the candles on the Kanara. Then one of the seven principles is discussed. The principles are values of African culture, which contribute to the building and reinforcing of community among African Americans. Kwanzaa is not a religious holiday, but a cultural one with inherent spiritual quality. Africans of all faiths do and can celebrate Kwanzaa, Muslims, Christians, Black Hebrews, Jews, as well as those who follow ancient traditions. And according to Dr. Karenga, non-black people can also enjoy Kwanzaa. Just as non-Mexicans commemorate Cinco de Mayo and non-Native Americans participate in powwows. So I invite you now to join me from your home as we say an affirmation of Kwanzaa. Ooh. I believe in the unity of the community of triune God, the three in one God who creates, saves, and sustains, who expects us to practice Umoja, unity in diversity, and builds up our communities, stand together, pray together, worship together, fight injustice together, and love one another as Christ loves us. I believe in the self-determining triune God who determined the measurements for the foundation of the earth, who determined to create humanity by saying, let us make humankind in our own image, expecting us to practice kuchakuria, defining ourselves according to the will of God and speaking for ourselves the words given by the Holy Spirit. Our God expects us to practice Ujima, to take responsibility for collectively aiding one another to work out our own salvation, knowing that it is God working in us, recreating in us the perfect image of Jesus Christ. Ujima. I believe in a provider God who wants us to have our own vine and fig trees in joining us to practice Ujama, earning all we can, saving all we can, and giving all we can so that our communities will be self-sustaining and reflect the blessing and favor of God. I believe in God who provides for our needs and not our greed, and has given each child of God purpose, Nia, which is to be in communion and relationship with God and with the children of God. I believe that God is so creative that a virgin did bear a son by the Holy Spirit. So creative that Jesus Christ did suffer and die on a cross for my sins, rise from the dead for my salvation, and return to heaven for my hope. I believe that God is so creative that Jesus is going to come back and gather all the saints to him forevermore. I believe that God expects us to practice kuomba, creativity, to be creative enough to find a cure for novel deadly viruses like COVID, to provide excellent education for all children, to make sure that all of God's children have health care, food, and clean water. I believe that being created in the likeness of God means that we have the imagination, the intelligence, and the capacity to envision peace, to carry out justice, to do acts of mercy, and to love our neighbor. Imani. I have the faith to believe that with God, all things are possible. I will practice Imani and honor my ancestors on whose shoulders I stand. By their work, institutions for learning were founded and sustained. By their creativity, jazz, blues, and gospel songs came into being. 
By their work, we gain the level of freedom that we have this day. I will practice Imani hoping that the teachers and leaders of our community and nation will remain true to the cause of freedom and faith. I will practice Imani knowing that it takes a village to raise children and in my heart and hands lie the ability to help raise up children for God. I believe that God lives in you and in me and together we can show forth the kingdom until Christ shall come again. Amen. May the Advent light lead the way to a joyous Christmas season for everyone. I am sending you the light of peace. God be with you. That's fine. <laughs> Passing the peace of Christ from Lubbock, Texas. Hello, my Pilgrim family. Peace be with you. Good morning, pilgrims. I'm here today to wish you peace, joy, and love. My pilgrim friends, God's peace be with you. The peace of Christ be with you. And the power of the Holy Spirit give you strength and courage. Peace and joy to all of our pilgrim family. Peace be with you, pilgrims. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Pilgrim family, peace be with you. We love you and miss you very much. The presence and peace of God be with you this day. Our Old Testament reading today comes from Psalms, Psalm 148. Praise for God's universal glory. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord for he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. Here ends our Old Testament reading. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Good morning, Pilgrim. Do you already know what you want to do when you grow up? Or is it because you're so interested in music or computers or art or building things? You don't always know right from the beginning. Sometimes you need to take more classes in high school or college or you see something else that interests you. Or sometimes even as an adult, you decide you want to go into a different career than you already had chosen. Well, in our scripture today, Mary and Joseph bring Jesus to the church community. Now, what's the church community? It's like us, Pilgrim. We're a community that cares about each other and helps us learn and gather wisdom and support each other. That's what's wonderful about being a part of Pilgrim. So in our scripture today, Mary and Joseph bring Jesus and he meets two prophets, Anna and Simeon. And both of them know right away that this is 
the Son of God, the Messiah. Jesus is who they've been waiting for. And they know what Jesus' life is going to be all about, about sharing God's love and showing us all about the love of God. So they knew right away. Do you think Jesus knew right away as a young boy? Maybe, or maybe he was just like you and wasn't sure exactly what his life held at that time. So that's what's good about the community and our pilgrim community, because we support each other here. We learn from each other. We walk with each other on our faith journey when we take a few steps forward and a few steps back. That's what a community is all about. And I am grateful for each one of you in our pilgrim community. Let us pray. Dear God, we don't have everything figured out. That's why we have you to walk with us on our path and to be a part of this pilgrim community to help us, support us, guide us, and teach us. Thank you for bringing me into this pilgrim community and for having all of you to be part of my family. Our gospel reading today comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 22 to 40. When the time came for the ritual cleansing in accordance with the law from Moses, they brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. It is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male will be dedicated to the Lord. They offered a sacrifice in keeping with what's stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. A man named Simeon was in Jerusalem. He was righteous and devout. He eagerly anticipated the restoration of Israel and the Holy Spirit rested on him. The Holy Spirit revealed to him that he wouldn't die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Led by the Spirit, he went to the temple area. Meanwhile, Jesus' parents brought the child to the temple so that they could do what was customary under the law. 
Simeon took Jesus in his arms and praised God. He said, Now, Master, let your servant go in peace according to your word, because my eyes have seen your salvation. You prepared this salvation in the presence of all peoples. It is a light for revelation to the Gentiles and a glory for your people Israel. His father and mother were amazed by what was said about him. Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This boy is a sign to be the cause of the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that generates opposition, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your innermost being too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, who belonged to the tribe of Asher. She was very old. After she married, she lived with her husband for seven years. She was now an 84-year-old widow. She never left the temple area, but worshiped God with fasting and prayer night and day. She approached at that very moment and began to praise God and to speak to Je about Jesus to everyone who was looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Mary and Joseph had completed everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to their hometown, Nazareth in Galilee. The child grew up and became strong. He was filled with wisdom and God's favor was on him. The word of the God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We made it. After days, weeks, months of preparations for Christmas, it has come. Many of this year's preparations were certainly different due to COVID. Family traditions had to be altered, perhaps new ones created, but the familiar anticipation and excitement of the season was still there. In fact, some of us noted that preparation seemed more amped up this year than usual. People bought and decorated their trees earlier. Some lots even ran out. Light displays seemed bigger and included a host of new holiday inflatables. Christmas sales started earlier, lasted longer, and offered bigger discounts. Even here at Pilgrim, we found creative ways to safely expand our engagement in Advent and enhance our celebration of Christmas. In addition to our traditional weekly lighting of the Advent candles, we've also had the opportunity to thoughtfully examine the Advent versus Christmas tension, meet virtually for weekly Advent reflections, and even test our knowledge in a friendly game of Advent trivia during virtual fellowship hour. Our Christmas pageant took a different form, but it was just as delightful and inspiring as ever, and we had the added bonus of being able to re-watch and share with others because it's available online. And who knows, maybe some of the new activities we tried this year, like the Christmas lights tour or the illumination parade, will become annual traditions. It seems that after a really rough year, we were eager for some good news and a reason to celebrate, something that we could look forward to with certainty. In a year with so many unexpected, unpleasant surprises, the certainty of the joy of Christmas became magnified in importance. So this week, this past week, our waiting was finally over. We once again celebrated the miracle of the birth of baby Jesus, reflected with awe and wonder at God's willingness to come journey with us in human form. And not just in any form, but in the being of a beautiful, tiny baby, born to young, inexperienced parents who had no idea what they were getting into, but said yes anyway when called to take a leap of faith. Perhaps in some measure, many of us can relate a bit to that feeling, whether you've brought home a new son or daughter, adopted a fur baby, or become a proud new aunt, uncle, grandparent, or godparent, you may recognize that paradoxical mix of emotions. The positive energy, anticipation, and sense of hope that comes when a new life enters yours, mixed with a pinch of anxiousness and what now? What next? What might the future hold? 
a future that is yet unwritten but pregnant with possibilities that you may not have felt free to imagine until now. It's exhilarating, but also a bit frightening. And this is where we meet Mary and Joseph today in our gospel scripture. They've made it. After an arduous journey and in the most unusual of circumstances, eight days ago, they were blessed by the miracle of the birth of a son. Birth is always miraculous when you consider all of the things that have to go just right from conception through delivery to create a new life from one that already exists. But of course, the world knew that the birth of Mary's baby was an extraordinary miracle. One that all of creation had been waiting for with anxious anticipation for generations. The baby's arrival was greeted with great joy and quiet fanfare, witnessed by angels, shepherds, and heavenly hosts. But now, they were gone. And it's time for Mary and Joseph to begin their lives as new parents. To do the ordinary things that are necessary and expected. According to their faith tradition, one of their first official tasks was to dedicate and name their child. Although they both already knew their son's special relationship with God, and in fact had already been told by what name he was to be called, participation in these traditional rites was an important public affirmation of their covenantal relationship with God. It also served to establish the identity of their son as a member of the faith community and heir to their legacy as God's people. These types of rituals give us an opportunity to celebrate what has happened and is yet to come. To thank God for her steadfast faithfulness and reaffirm our faith that God will continue to keep his promises. Mary and Joseph were practicing an ancient ritual, but we still have similar practices today. Many Jews celebrate the birth of a baby with a bris or a baby naming ceremony, during which God is thanked, the baby's name is announced, and the child is welcomed into the community, sometimes literally by passing the child from the oldest relative to the parents, symbolizing the passing of responsibility and heritage from one generation to the next. Often the ceremony concludes with a priestly blessing of the child, expressing their hopes for the future. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord deal kindly and graciously with you. May the Lord bestow his favor upon you and grant you peace. Acknowledging that while we don't know what the future holds, we do have confidence in who holds the future. Our Christian Protestant tradition of infant baptism contains many of the same elements. Through baptism with water and the Holy Spirit, the child is visibly brought into union with Christ, the present faith community, and with the church of every time and place. These rituals are more than just obligations and opportunities for celebration. They are sacred preparations for the journey that lies ahead for the child and for us. They provide moments for us to pause and reflect on our hopes and dreams for the child and for the world. To ponder what if and remember that God is always doing a new thing, unlimited and unconstrained by our experience burdened imagination. Bruce and I have three children and our third child was born in 1998. For a variety of reasons, it felt to us like an unusually tense and uncertain time in our country heightened by dire predictions of what might happen on January 1st, 2020. Do you recall the panic about what might happen because many computer programs only allowed two digits for the year instead of four? Experts couldn't predict what would happen when the date descended from 99 to 00. 
There was widespread fear of havoc that would disable the computer systems that ran everything from airline reservations to financial databases to government systems. An eerie sense of possible impending doom was in the air. People were stocking up on water, hedging their financial bets. But there was also a race against time to avoid the worst from occurring. We wanted certainty, but it was unavailable. So hope would have to do. Perhaps in, as part of a response to that time, Bruce and I decided to celebrate the birth of our third child by leaning more strongly into some of the ancient traditions of our faith and culture. As with our first two children, we planned to have the child baptized in church, but first, we decided to have an African baby naming ceremony. Thanking God for the gift of this beloved child, honoring the wisdom, strength, and courage of our ancestors, and acknowledging her as heir to those riches, claiming her identity through the choice of a strong, hope-filled name, and asking her elders to confer a priestly blessing for the journey ahead. Some of you watching today's service may have participated in Asha's baby naming. It was held here in this very room, and I have to say, it was very, very cool. That day, we created a sacred space, and you could almost feel that we were surrounded by the power of God's steadfast love, embodied by those who had gone before us, and those who were present to witness her dedication and naming. She was introduced to the world by her maternal grandmother and paternal grandfather as Asha Nicole Cox. Asha meaning hope and life, Nicole meaning victorious people. In a sense, this ancient ritual gave us the opportunity to lift our heads up from the ordinariness and exhaustion of being new parents, step aside from the growing sense of anxiety and fretfulness in our country, and remember the wonders that God has done and will continue to bless us with. Now, we didn't leave that ceremony with any real clarity about what the future would hold for Asha or how Y2K would pan out. But we did have a little less anxiety and a bit more hope. Re-energized by the memories of how God has always been with us, how God has shown up in the places and faces of those we least expect, and how even when we're not paying attention, God is still watching over us. We were inspired to imagine the best, not just fear the worst, and to realize that God's best is beyond even our wildest dreams. This is the gift of Christmas that just keeps on giving. Long after the needles have fallen off the tree and the decorations are packed away, gifts have been open, enjoyed, and perhaps even broken from enthusiastic overuse, Life has gone back to our normal, everyday routine. But God is still with us, Emmanuel. So in these post-Christmas days, as we prepare for the new year, with all that we hope and fear it may bring, I want to encourage you to not rush past Christmas. The radio stations may have moved on from Christmas carols, but that doesn't mean that you have to. Instead, I invite you to pause and savor Jesus' infancy for a bit, to rest in the sweetness of the intergenerational temple scene and reflect on the wisdom and gifts that you have received from past generations and explore how you might pass it on, to ponder the new thing that God is doing right now. The possibilities are endless. Because in God, all things are possible. Amen. Christus et Maria, 
share your joys and your concerns in the chat on YouTube Live, I remind you that it is a public chat. Most holy and merciful God, you sent your Son into the world as the perfect sign of your saving love. Let us be bearers of this love, your love, to others this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, you sent your Son into the world to announce good news to the poor and the oppressed. Help us to live the gospel for the sake of those we serve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, you sent your Son into the world to sow the seed of the Word, to create something beautiful out of nothing. Enable us to do the same by our work. Help us to reap its fruit in joy and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mysterious God, you sent your Son into the world to reconcile us to you. Make us ministers of reconciliation and people of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And hear us now, O oh God, as we name before you those we bear in our hearts today. And I invite you to name them aloud wherever you are. Ken, Chow, Nancy, God, we lift up these names to you. They are not just names. They are your beloved creation.
And so we pray, O oh God, that you would bring your peace and your hope and the power of your glory and love to those we have named before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, we are a world, a nation, a people, a community in need of your healing. We are crumbling under the weight of COVID-19. We have not done a good job of thinking about other people, O oh God. We are struggling to breathe and to listen and to hear one another. We have wounded one another, O oh God by our thoughtlessness and our words. We do not trust one another, O oh God. We cannot even agree on what is factual. And so we are broken. We have all these little pieces of our souls lying around, exposed, We need your Holy Spirit to mend us, to weave us back together into the beautiful tapestry that you intend. So we pray for healing. We pray for healing both from this pandemic and also from the wounds we have caused one another these past years, and especially these past eight months. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God, you sent your son into the world to bring hope. And we are starting to feel that hope. We're starting to see little glimpses of light. Our new president is once again starting to act presidential. A vaccine is being rolled out as we speak. And so we have hope once again. We hope in who you are ultimately, O oh God, in your love and care for us, every one of us, regardless of the language we speak or the nation we come from or the way in which we pray. We hope in you. We do not hope merely for a return to the way things were because we know that that wasn't that good to begin with anyway. We hope for something more, something that more closely resembles your beloved community. We hope to be a part of that community as we seek to be your disciples here in this place. Help us to be a people of hope in this Christmas season. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now, O oh God, we come to you with the words that you for first taught to us. Hear us as we pray together those words however we can, with whatever words that we can. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, 
as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God is all about abundance, love that never wavers, mercy that never fails. Let us offer our gifts generously and in abundant love as a thanksgiving to God. You are invited to give to Pilgrim Congregational Church using any of these methods. Online at www.pilgrimoakpark.org. Select giving from the menu or click the Give to Pilgrim button via the Tidely app, downloaded from your phone's app store. Text, or you can text the word GIVE to 833-721-1098, or you can mail a check. At this time, we ask that you give generously as you are able. With these gifts, dear God, accept the praise and thanksgiving of our hearts, which rejoice in your goodness and love. Let our gifts point to your presence in the world and do your transforming work among all who are vulnerable and in need. Amen. Amen. And now we turn to a period of announcements. Announcements this week are rather short. The new year is almost upon us, and there are several engaging programs that will be starting very soon in January. Uh, these programs require your advanced registration, so we want you to check them out now. Uh, starting in uh, two weeks, on January 10th, Cleo and I will be leading a five-week Zoom discussion uh, called, Who is My Neighbor? What the Bible Says About Refugees. I hope and am planning for it to be engaging, thoughtful, challenging. You'll want to be there. Information on the series and the registration link are on the website and in the What's Happening at Pilgrim weekly email. And then beginning uh, Friday, January 8th, Pastor Gloria will be leading a six-week Bible study on the Gospel of Mark uh, from noon to 1 p.m. via Zoom. If you're interested in participating, please email her or Joycelyn today uh, so that she can order a study guide for you. The cost of that study guide is $7. If that cost is prohibitive to your participation, please let me know and we will uh, we'll work it out. Lastly, we continue every week to meet on Tuesday evenings at 8 p.m. for a brief uh, but lovely service of evening prayer. It is a time to engage with God, to engage with one another, to check in, to notice, to observe, and to dwell in the peace of God. The Zoom link is available on our website. I do invite you to join us there. And now please 
join me in singing our closing hymn. Please join me in singing the first two verses of O Little Town of Bethlehem. And now, my friends, as we prepare to leave our time together, I wish for you all the best. Live into the possibilities and all the joy and wisdom and love that this season has to offer. Go in peace and dare to dream. Amen.